Now, let's try this demo. I've got, uh, this demo is a sine wave playing on a speaker uh, with a strobe light. What we have here is a speaker that has a strobe light flashing right next to it, so it catches different part of the motion and it appears to slow down. So we're basically seeing a slow motion effect on this speaker. And there is a little bit of artifact uh, video problems you can see because the, uh, uh, it does cause problems for the camera. But nonetheless, what we're looking at here is a low frequency sound uh, and you can see the speaker going in and out creating compressions and rarefactions. Here's where we turn up the amplitude and you can see the amplitude of displacement getting greater and it looks like that speaker is getting ready to blow and now the amplitude is reduced again and now it's not so extreme and we're about to turn up the amplitude one more time you can hear it getting louder and you can see the displacement of the speaker getting greater and there at the bottom you can also see that it's uh, starting to distort a little bit and our speaker is getting close to being blown and turning it back down back to a lower amplitude. Now here's where I'm going to change the frequency. Start off with a low frequency, go a little higher, a little higher still you can hear the pitch going up slightly, an even higher frequency and back down. Now when you hear it buzz like that, that's when the speaker is vibrating at the resonance frequency of the metal case of the speaker. You'll hear that in just a second right here. So what we have here is an oscilloscope and function generator. Uh, it does two things. It makes sounds and then it uh, graphs them. And here is, let me just turn on this sound so you can hear it. What we're playing right now is we are graphing the uh, a frequency of, this is 0.2 hertz, but it's got a multiplier of 1,000 down here, so that's actually 200 hertz. And what this is graphing is uh, it is graphing the pressure in front of the speaker versus time, or it's graphing the displacement of spe the speaker versus time. So here is where the pressure is high, and here's where the pressure is atmospheric right along there. Here's where the pressure is low. Uh, so here's a compression, here's a refraction. You could also interpret it as it's graphing the displacement of the speaker. In other words, this is where the displacement is positive going forward, and this is where the displacement is negative going backwards, and here's where the speaker is at equilibrium point. Now, that oscilloscope is graphing the pressure in front of the speaker versus time, or it could also be graphing the displacement of the speaker versus time. A forward displacement would be a positive value, a negative displacement would be a, a backwards value, uh, and right in the middle would be zero. Uh, now, watch what happens when I increase the frequency. How does the sound change? So what we have this sound of 200 hertz here, if I increase the frequency, how does the sound change? So I'm going to turn this up to a little over 300 hertz here. This is 200. Listen how the sound changes. How is that sound different? Let's go back and do it one more time. That's the original sound, 200 hertz. That's 340 hertz. Well, the pitch is higher, so it's a higher note. So you can hear as that frequency goes up, the sound gets higher pitch. If you're into music, you know that means it goes from a C to a D or an E. How does the wavelength change when I increase the frequency? So I'm gonna start here again at 0.2 or 200 hertz. When I increase the frequency, look what happens to the wavelength. You see how the wavelength gets shorter? As the frequency increases, let's go even one more step here, the higher I put the frequency, the shorter the wavelength. Well, you can see the wavelength gets shorter, or wavelength becomes lower. 
And that can be explained by the next question, how does the wave speed change when I increase the frequency? Well, if you remember anything from last time, you'll see that the speed is not affected by a change in frequency. It doesn't change. And that is why if I increase the frequency, the wavelength gets lower. So see the last lecture to understand that. The only thing that affects the speed of sound is the medium. So if you don't change the don't change the medium, that means the speed stays the same. So increasing the frequency will lower the wavelength or increasing the wavelength will lower the frequency. How does the sound change when I increase the amplitude? Listen to this. We'll start out at 200 millivolts. Now move up to 300 millivolts. 600 millivolts, 1,000 millivolts, and then back down to 200 millivolts. Now hopefully you were able to hear how the volume did get louder as I turned up the amplitude. However, you will also notice that if I doubled the amplitude, the volume didn't get twice as loud. That's because the perception of sound works on a logarithmic scale. To hear something that appears to be twice as loud, you actually have to increase the amplitude by 3.16 times, or the square root of 10. I'm gonna increase the amplitude. Notice it gets louder. If you take a look at the uh, speaker when I do this, you'll see the speaker goes in and out farther. It also creates higher pressure and lower pressure. Uh, higher pressure for uh, compression, lower pressure, for a rarefaction. So now we're going to sketch a low amplitude and high amplitude longitudinal wave, both of the same wavelength. Now with a transverse wave, it's very easy to change the amplitude. Here is a low amplitude transverse wave like that. A high amplitude transverse wave is like that. All you gotta do is make the wave taller. A Little bit more tricky for a longitudinal wave. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to draw kind of a, the side view of a slinky. Here's the equilibrium of a slinky that's like this far apart. If I had a compression, I would get it a bit closer together. And then a rare faction would be a bit farther apart. And then a compression would be a bit closer together. And then a rare faction would be a bit farther apart. So here is a compression right there. Here's another compression right there. Those are compressions. Rare factions right here. Now we're gonna draw a high amplitude longitudinal wave. And what it is is that the, both the compressions and rare factions are more extreme. So if this is what we have as an equilibrium like this, our compression for this high amplitude wave would be like that, very squished together. And the, longi the uh, longitudinal rare faction would be very spread apart. And then a compression again, very squeezed together. And then another rare faction, very spread apart. So here is our compression right here. Here's our compression right here. Here's our rare faction. Really, I'll fix this right here so I have a rare faction exactly halfway in the middle. Another rare faction right here. Approximately the same wavelength, but you can just see it's more extreme. It's more squeezed together for this uh, compression. It's more spread apart for this rare faction if it's a higher amplitude wave. So here's a demonstration of a longitudinal wave. You can see what's causing the wave is the piston moving back and forth. And you can see where we can follow some of these compressions and you can see the rare factions or where it's really spread apart. But let's go ahead and turn up the amplitude and see how this wave changes. Now notice here that these compressions are more squeezed together and the rare factions are more spread apart right here. And you'll also notice that the displacement is greater. Notice the piston's moving back and forth more. Let's turn up the amplitude even more. And this is the most 
uh, high amplitude that I can get with this applet. Notice that the compressions are really squeezed together, the rare fractions are really spread apart, and the displacement of this is maximal. And if I go to a lower amplitude, I'll lower it back down so we can watch it one more time. You can see how it's even with this low amplitude, it's almost hard to tell the difference between the compressions and the rarefactions, and the piston is barely moving at all.